my guys. Jesus. What a difference a fucking day makes. Good God. We have gone from absolute paradise yesterday to uh, <laughs> a regular slit your wrist, throw yourself a, uh, in front of a bus, kill yourself kind of day. Uh, but maybe that's not the answer. Um, because I just can't resist sending this out to, uh, we're going to send this out to uh, Andy the Gardener and Colony of Cells. I, you know, I don't know why I in, in, in enjoy fucking with these close-minded people who uh, have their version of reality. It's my version of reality or the highway. So, uh, <laughs> Andy and Colony, this one's for you from right here in Yahoo News today. Uh, of course, the single most terrifying article in the mainstream media today. A lot more terrifying than anything about climate change. From good old Insider, which I think is the same thing as Business Insider, from a <clears throat> oncologist, Dr. Kelly Birch. Don't know if Kelly is a male or female Kelly. Anyway, take it away, Dr. Birch. I have studied more than 5,000 near-death experiences. My research has convinced me without a doubt that there is life after death. As I say, this is the... Uh, the most terrifying uh, article. Uh, the, the, the very thought of life after death, uh, it's, uh, you know, we, we hear about death anxiety. I have life anxiety. The, the, the one shred of hope that uh, I have left in my teeny weeny miserable little a uh, pointless existence is that my mama was right and when I die it is lights out and then I have to read this shit to throw absolute terror into me although this really doesn't talk about reincarnation uh, it just doesn't go there and which is obviously the single most terrifying concept on the planet. The very thought uh, that I could be reborn on this planet is the reason I have not killed myself. Anyway, take it away, Dr. Birch. <clears throat> 37 years ago, I was an, an oncologist resident learning about how best to treat cancer using radiation. <coughs> These were the pre-internet days, so I did my research <coughs> in the library. I, I'm pretty sure anybody under the age of 30 has no clue what this person is talking about. Doing research in a library. I vaguely remember being a freelance journalist uh, before the internet and spending hours per day in libraries. Jesus. Anyway, one day I was flipping through a large volume of the Journal of American Medical Association when I came across an article describing near-death experiences or NDEs. It stopped me in my tracks. All my medical training told me you were either alive or dead. There was no in-between. 
but suddenly I was reading from a cardiologist describing patients who had died, then come back to life, reporting very distinct, almost unbelievable, and of course in Andy the Gardener and a uh, colony of cells was not almost unbelievable experiences. From that moment, I was fascinated with near-death experiences or NDEs. I define a near-death experience as someone who is either comatose or clinically dead without a heartbeat. Having a lucid experience where they see, hear, feel emotions, and interact with other beings. Learning more about these experiences has fundamentally changed my view of the universe. <clears throat> I'm not going to get off on this separate rant. I am just going to interject what these NDEs are caused by is DMT being released by your pituitary gland at the time of death. Okay, this is, according to my research, what triggers these NDEs on our way out, but does that mean that, is that proof, as my mother would say, that all it is is this flush of brain chemistry? Does that mean that once the DMT flush goes through, then it's lights out or not? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you never hear about DMT in this article, so I just had to throw this in there. This is a real NDE 101 for dummies. <clears throat> Near-death experiences have common threads. When I finished my residency, I started the Near-Death Experience Research Foundation. I started collecting stories from people who had NDEs and evaluating them with the mind of a scientist and a doctor. I make opinions based on evidence and came into this as a skeptic. But in the face of overwhelming evidence, I have come to believe there is certainly an afterlife. No two NDEs are the same, but as I studied thousands of them, I saw a consistent pattern of events emerging in a predictable order. About 45% who of people who have an NDE report an out-of-body experience. When this happens, their consciousness separates from their physical body, usually hovering above the body. The person can see and hear what is happening around them, which usually includes frantic attempts to revive them. One woman even reported a doctor throwing a tool on the floor when he picked up the wrong one, something the doctor later confirmed. After the out-of-body experience, people say they are transported into another realm. Many pass through a tunnel and experience a bright light. <clears throat> Then they're greeted by deceased loved ones, including their pets, who are in the prime of their lives. Most people report an overwhelming sense of love and peace. They feel like this other realm is their real home. <clears throat> 
These experiences may sound cliche. The bright light, the tunnel, the loved ones, but over 25 years of studying NDEs, I have come to believe that these descriptions have become cultural tropes because they are true. I even worked with a group of children under five who had NDEs. They reported the same experience, experiences that adults did. Adults did, and at that age, you're unlikely to have heard about bright lights or tunnels after you die. Other people report seemingly unbelievable events which we can later confirm. One woman lost consciousness while riding her horse on a, on a trail. Her body stayed on the trail while her consciousness traveled with the horse as he galloped back to the barn. Later, she was able to describe exactly what happened at the barn because she had seen it despite her body not being there. Others who had not spoken to her confirmed her account. I am a medical doctor. I have read brain research and considered every possible explanation for NDEs and I am virtually 100% sure he has read the, um, you, you, you know, <clears throat> the one I just talked about, the DMT rush from your pineal gland at the time of death. I, 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 I can assure you this man has read that research. <clears throat> the bottom line is that none of them hold water. There is not even a remotely plausible physical explanation for this phenomenon. I don't care what Hambone Littletail has to say about it. And then he talks about this whole subject which I really haven't heard about, called fear death experiences. Um, well, let me go ahead and read it. It's just a couple of paragraphs. I have also studied fear death experiences like near-miss car accidents. I take a particular definition for NDEs for near-death experiences, the person must be unconscious, but there is another type of phenomenon that fascinates me too, what I call fear-death experiences. These are situations where you feel like your life is in imminent danger. It might be a near-miss car accident or a sudden fall. These people generally don't experience the tunnel and the light, but they often report their life flashing before their eyes. While some people with NDEs report these life reviews, they're more common with fear death experiences People even recall events from toddlerhood that they cannot consciously remember, but that we can later confirm by talking with family members and others. While I am passionate about NDEs, my day job still revolves around helping patients fight cancer. I don't tell my patients about my NDE research, and yet my work with NDEs has made me a more compassionate and loving doctor. 
I am able to help my patients face life-threatening diseases with increased courage and passion, my goal is to help them have more healthy days here on Earth, but I firmly believe that if, that if, and when they pass, they will be at peace. And then we have a uh, 1,886 comments where everybody jumps in this pointless debate. You know, we have the Andy the Gardeners versus the whoever's on the other end. Well, I guess I should have made my run for it while I could, huh? So I'm only going to read the first comment with 100, I'm sorry, 224 thumbs up. There is another commonality not reported in this article. People that have experienced an NDE, I have had one, do not give a flying fuck if others believe them or do or not and do not go to any effort to convince others. interesting story. I do not give a fuck if Andy the Gardener, Colony of Cells, Sancho Panza, or anybody else wants to believe me, I know what happened to me and these people having these NDEs know what happened to them. I am stuck here. Uh, this related article on CNN. Uh, I also found interesting. I wasn't going to read it, but now that I'm stuck here uh, again in the monsoon, because this happens to me all the time. I, I feel like it happened. And I feel really sorry for people who don't uh, have this happen to them all the time. Many Americans say they have interacted with deceased family members and dreams. And what is the headline about this? <clears throat> the connections people experience with their loved ones do not necessarily end after death. A recent key research center survey results suggest this over half of 5,079 surveyed American adults, 53% reported having been visited by a dead relative in dreams or some other form according to the survey. Responses from Americans 
of all the Lucas background. Um, so often, it, 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 you know, it's not even remarkable. Uh, I'm sitting there in my dreams, you know, just talking to my mother or talking to my brother, uh, you know, just like I'm talking uh, to living friends uh, in, in, in my dreams. Uh, I, I, I don't know... I've never really thought about it. I, I, I don't think there's anything supernatural or mysterious about this. Well, I mean, other than uh, we don't know what the hell happens uh, when we're dreaming, but uh, I, uh, but I really feel sorry for people. You know, my sister is very jealous of me. Apparently, my sister never never dreams about our mother or our brother. Uh, she is extremely jealous that it happens so often in my own dream state that, uh, that, that, it's, that it's not even worth mentioning. Uh, I, I really feel sorry for people uh, who don't get to visit uh, their dead loved ones uh, in, in their dreams. It's just a, a, a natural and I consider healthy uh, part of my life and I'm happy for it. And, uh, and also, uh, Sancho probably doesn't want to hear this, uh, dead pets show up in my dreams quite often. Uh, I still have uh, uh, dreams uh, about my dog, Battle. Uh, Battle uh, was born, actually I was five when Battle was born, and I think I was 14 when he died, so he lived about nine years. And uh, one of these weird recurring dreams that I used to have about battle, although I, I I don't have it so much anymore, is that like if if, if I had you know he died and so battle died in 
I think 1974, but if I had a dream about battle, you know, in the year 2000, he had never died. And so he was, oh, uh, in 2000, he would have been 35 years old. So I would have these dreams, and, and, and the regular feature in the dream was that battle was, you see what I'm saying? He, he, he had never died. He was just there and was uh, 35 or 50 years old or whatever. I haven't had a dream about battle in a while that I can remember, but uh, it's nothing unusual for me to dream about uh, pets uh, that have died. Uh, uh, I do not think uh, in any way, shape, or form dreaming about a dead dog uh, means that the, the dog is living in another realm. Uh, I'd say the same for my mother or brother. Uh, I, 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 I don't really think about it, but they're living in the realm of my dreams, and that's all I care about. And anyway, my living dog is telling me he has got to pee that his bladder is bursting and I better let him outside PDQ. So I need that. Let my dog, my living dog, go pee. And uh, I need to go throw one of my uh, factory farm fellow earthlings uh, on the fossil fuel powered fracked gas grill while I still can. My guys, you need to pee. You say, Pop, I have got to pee. I'm going to be a dead dog pretty soon. <laughs>